Hello and welcome to the Entrepreneurial Journey podcast. Today I have the amazing Cheryl Newman with me. She is the CEO of Appetite for Business. Hi Cheryl, how are you? Hi there, good afternoon Rebecca. I'm really well, thank you. Really well, thanks for asking. Yeah, no, that's an absolute pleasure. Now we've known each other for quite some time. We have indeed. Yes. A number of years I think it's been now. Hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And since that time, I've seen your business grow from strength to strength. Yes. Um, And I'm curious to know, because I know how it started, but our listeners don't. How did it all begin, Cheryl? And what do you do? We need to explain what you do as well. So um, to start with, we are a a niche Microsoft 365 consultancy. and We only specialize in the products within that tool set. But for us, we're really about business improvement. So we're not an IT organization. We don't fix computers. We don't take care of any of that. But what we're really interested in is how can we make businesses better? And um, I think we really came into our own during COVID. And certainly now when there's such a cost squeeze, you know, at the moment, everyone's like, ah, oh, what can I do? And I don't think any a number of businesses really understand, you know, they've got so many multiple systems, legacy systems, things that they could um, realize value in and save money longer term so that's what we do but we started way back in 2016 no sorry two, yeah 2016 um I was kind of an accidental accidental entrepreneur really um I was part of another business it was a really bad bad recession in Aberdeen at the time things weren't weren't looking good so I I did a management buyout for, with my business partner at the time um I was left literally with two premises, two offices, a small team and £1,000 in the bank and no customers. So on hindsight, it was probably a crazy thing to do. <laughs> very, very crazy. But, yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, thankfully, yeah, coming into our seventh year. So yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very, very grateful that we're still here and we're still trading and we're still doing some, getting the chance to do some amazing things. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well done. How many do you have in your team now? So there's 16 of us now. Wow. Gosh, because when I kind of was working with you in Aberdeen, there were, I think there were only eight or nine of you. Yeah, I think so. Um, COVID was COVID was crazy. We we had a massive growth spurt during COVID, which was fantastic. But now we're kind of really in steady state. You know, I think we've got the core team really comfortable. We're, you know, we're managing some quite large projects now. Reputation is growing. And I'm just wanting to keep it as it is and just kind of, you know, build up, build up slowly again from there. No, no, it's good. It's a good plan. Yeah. Definitely. Now, before we came on, we were talking ah. about having long hair. Yes, we were. We were. <laughs> and this myth that women of a certain age shouldn't have long hair. And I don't know about you, but coming up in the business world in the 90s, because that's when I started my career, and I think that's when you started yeah. yours. Yeah. You kind of looked up to the older women in senior posts and bidders and they all had really short hair didn't they yeah they did they did (laughs) nobody had long hair (laughs) and you and I have just had a conversation about going look we're over 50 but sod it we're having long hair (laughs) (laughs) yeah I think so and you know I do you know what Rebecca actually when we look back well when I look back the leadership style has changed so dramatically since the 90s. I mean, when I started, I always remember um, working for a really large energy organization. And I remember um, there's a female kind of head of department for that department. And she was known as a ball breaker. I mean, she was. Grown men went into her office and came out crying. And I always, you know, and I thought it was that stereotypical type. We have to be adopt these manly characteristics. And for me, I, you know, I'd rather, I've always played to my strengths. And a lot of our competitors laughed at us, you know, when they said, oh, you lead with kindness and compassion and vulnerability. What's that all about? Mm -hmm. But, you know, our growth has demonstrated otherwise. So um, I think people want a different style of leadership now. They want a more inclusive, a more supportive. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be everything that the bosses that I'd, or pieces of the bosses that I'd had. I'd always wanted to be that and really encourage and support and, and help people to the best of my ability to do so. So I think, yeah, it's definitely changed in that, in that kind of period. And we're, in, we're definitely in a different place now. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, gosh. Thankfully. Oh, yeah. thankfully, yes. Totally. Yeah. I, I hope those horrible ball breaker images and stereotypes are, are now 
in the dim and distant past or fewer and far between because they weren't helpful at all no but um, I, yeah I was thinking I was just thinking prior to this call and um it's interesting I shared this at an interview recently um you know when I set up the business I, I was at a networking event and there was a very well respected individual in Aberdeen said to me what are you doing women don't run businesses you better be at home cooking your husband's dinner Okay. my husband's actually a better cook than me I have to just put that and he actually cooks my dinner which I'm very thankful for but that's still and that was only six years ago mm -hmm. um and I don't know whether it's oil sector energy sector whether it's because it is such a male dominated environment mm -hmm. it is changing it is getting better but there are still there are still some some challenges <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, there are. It is a lot better than it was. And I know a reflection of that, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, reflection of that is how LinkedIn has changed for the yes. best. And I know you show a lot of vulnerability on mm. LinkedIn, which I really, really appreciate and actually quite brave. So I, I, I'm kind of working my way up to that <laughs> vulnerability. Um, <laughs> But have you had any backlash with that or adverse reactions to it? Um, do you know, I think LinkedIn's a really funny, funny thing. I think um, I, I, I have no issue because I think when you're starting a business, I think there's an awful lot of LinkedIn about overnight success, you know, seven million figures. It's easy. Yes, it is. If you get investment in your busy in your business, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's very easy. But when you're someone who's starting out, you're um, organically growing, you're investing in your own business. I think it's really important to be truthful and mm -hmm. you're not wanting to be doom and gloom, but I think it's giving a biased, honest opinion. Yeah, it's it's amazing to have your own business. I wouldn't, I don't think I'm employable now. I don't think anyone would employ me, <laughs> but there's highs and lows. It is a roller coaster. Uh, I mean, two days ago, you'll see in a post, I said, oh, mm -hmm. I just, this was dreadful. But we have to remember it's a bad day. It's not a bad life. Yeah. It's a bad yeah. day. And it'll pass and it'll change. But I think it's difficult on LinkedIn. There's a lot of noise at the moment. There's a lot of people playing to the audience. I, 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 so it's quite hard to see who's being honest and who's not. Mm. Um, but I think if you just be yourself and be truthful, and I think that's all you can be. Um, yes, I have. I've had quite a number of people saying, um, especially after the awards this year, oh, you're so lucky. Well, I don't think I am. I've worked hard. The team's worked very, very hard. So I don't think there was any luck involved in it. We've just kind of grafted. And yeah. that's that's translated into results. So nothing's been handed to us. Nothing. We've had to work for everything we've got. Yeah. And I know how hard you work. Yeah. Yeah. It's the thing, isn't it? When they say you become you, you was it they say when you become an entrepreneur, there's no nine, it's not you're giving up the nine to five, it's like the nine to it's like the eight, like eight at night. You, you, there is there, there is no there is no hours that you worked anymore it's just you just have to do what you have to do to get through <laughs> now, which were the awards that you won because I know you've won a number over the years so what was it this year you won oh this year we were oh so far really unbelievable didn't expect it at all we won um best workplace in Scotland oh, from Scotland wow. IS yeah. so that was oh that was that meant a lot to me because it's obviously my industry so that was good mm. we won um high growth business for Federation of Small Business uh, for national awards, so that was great. And we also won business success over five years for the Elevator Awards in Aberdeen. Oh, well done! That's phenomenal. Yeah. God, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, well it's done. yeah, it's amazing. I mean, to get three was just we just didn't expect it at all. Um, yeah. So fantastic. where have you put all your little awards in your office? Well, there's three of them behind me here and um, we've got some up on the cabinet and the in the office as well but it's there for all the team to see and enjoy it's all you know their hard work's contributed towards this so it's important that we share it and we <clears throat> recognize the kind of the culture we built here really it's all about culture it's that was the first thing that I want to to create with the team and you know we did some work together on values and that's stuck you know we've added another two since you know but they've stuck through and we all live and die by them basically and it, it just runs like a sticker rock through the business oh that is music to my ears, Cheryl. It really is. Yeah. Now, one of the things I know you're really good at is when yeah. people leave your business, because when you're growing a business, people come, people go. You mm. are really good at having good leavers. Yes. Well, mostly. <laughs> mostly you are. Do you know, one of my colleagues left recently who'd um, been given an opportunity. And she, she came and discussed it with me. And I said, take it. 
and they were like, don't you want to keep me? And I went, I would be doing the wrong thing in doing that. Mm. You've been presented with an opportunity and it's my job to support you. Mm. And it's the right thing for you to do. And I think they were quite taken aback and surprised. And I said, because, you know, it's all part of growth and learning. And I'm delighted to have had them for that period of time. But at the end of the day, you know, we've all got our own journeys to go on. And much as it, you know, I hate losing people, it's important that they can go on and continue their journey and what they want to do. So it's, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm pleased with them. I'm always really pleased with them. Yeah, I, I I think it's a lovely thing to to watch people blossom, grow, yeah. get those opportunities in the future. And you're right, it's kind of your responsibility to see them develop. Mm-hmm. And I think that as a leader, that's one of your key roles. And in a small business, they're going to leave. If you're in a corporate, they might move within that corporate. Mm-hmm. But in a small business, they naturally pretty much usually have to leave. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's a really good thing. It's not something I was always good at. Have you all been good at it? No, I mean, I think it's something as you get older and, mm. you know, aged, <laughs> it comes wisdom, I suppose, comes with it. And, but you know what, I've still got some of the original members of the team and they've grown with the business and they're support and, and we're creating opportunities. So we're trying to create those internal pathways as well as we're growing. And that's, mm. oh, I love that. I love that. I love giving them the autonomy and the responsibility and, you know, they treat this business as much as it's mine as it's their own, and they should be recognized and rewarded for that. Mm. Um, and I, I love it. I just love doing that. I just, it, yeah, it's great. I mean, who wants to, who wants to journey this on your own if you've got people with you to support you? It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. No, you have a camper van. I have a car, I actually have a caravan. Oh, it's a caravan. I thought it was yes. a caravan. We've gone old school. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. One of my friends has just bought one of those really cool, cute little caravans. Yeah. Um, what sort is yours? I'm fascinated by life on the road. Life on the road. Well, we didn't go out to buy a caravan. Right. So kind of what's happened is you'll you'll maybe know, obviously, um, my my health's not been the greatest over the years. And <clears throat> unfortunately, the vaccines has had an impact on an existing uh, condition that I had. Um so life's been a little bit restrictive for me at the moment. So we took a camper van away from my, it was my 50th birthday in June. Um, so my husband said to me, what would you love to do? I said, I'd love to go in a camper van. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah, I'd love to. I think it'd be great. And he was just like not having any of it. But um, we did it. And it was just the freedom, Rebecca, just the freedom to go wherever you want. There was no times. Um, I love, I love the sea. I love the beach. I love being near water. So for me, it was an absolute dream to just go to all these places where I could just kind of hang out there. Um, So we did that and we loved it, but we got a really large dog. He's a very big chocolate Labrador. And he basically took up the whole space with his bed and himself. So (laughs) we thought this isn't working. Um, So jokingly, we said, what will we get a caravan, you know? And the next minute, we went and seen one, and then my husband told me in the morning, I bought it. And I went, what? We did He's like, yeah, I bought it. We're doing it. Um, I was like, oh, my goodness me. But I'm fixated by Instagram. Like, and I've already got the plan for winter to do it up. And this, just, he's like, settle down. I'm like, no, this is like a whole new world of stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah, so it's really exciting. So it's, it's, it's a decent size. You can get four people in it. Brilliant. It's got a fixed bed, which we love, so you don't have to make the bed at night. Shower, toilet, fridge, everything we need to be self-contained on the road. So it's, um, yeah, it was really good fun. Perfect. So where did your adventures take you in the summer? So we just stayed in Scotland. Also uh-huh. just so we, yeah, so we just found our feet. So we were just down at Granton on Spey, which uh-huh. was lovely, beautiful. Yeah. Love that area upside Aviemore, lots of walks. And then we headed up to um, West Beach at Hopeman, which is a very cool a uh, very cool um, kind of camping caravan site. They've got a co- on-site cocktail bar. What? On-site um, food. So you can just sit on the beach and just totally chill out. It's right, lovely. okay. Where's <laughs> that? Why don't I know about the campsite with a cocktail bar? <laughs> yeah, awesome. Big, big plug out to the guys there. Yeah, super, super cool. That's at West Beach. West Beach at Hopeman. Hopeman, I've never heard of that. What side of the coast is that on? Side, side Elgin, so it's up, up oh, the east coast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've added that to my list of Add that to your list. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so um, 
the I think the the freedom is is a theme that runs through all of my interviews with entrepreneurs. It's mm. so important to them to have that level of freedom. My dog's whining in the background, so Sorry. ignore him. Um, and the caravan linked <coughs> beautifully to that. Hmm. Where you're over fifty now? Well, you're fifty, so it, don't put me over fifty. I'm just 50. No, 50 <laughs> Yeah, I'm nearly 52. <laughs> you have your eyes set on the horizon where you want to take the business and eventually exit, or have you not thought about that yet? I think there's two types of businesses in this world, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And both are equally as valid and important. <clears throat> excuse me, and important. You've got a lifestyle business. Yeah. Um, which is great. So obviously you maybe just have a sole trader and a, a few people, and, and they're fabulous. For me, I always wanted to grow the business. Um, that not necessarily to um, to a massive organization that's not ever been my dream to, to manage multiple people but um i'm very determined i am ambitious in my own space for myself and for my team mm -hmm. so yeah I, I would look to grow i think ultimately age being a factor i'm loving what i'm doing rebecca i feel that way i'm i'm not going anywhere anytime certainly in the next five years um but obviously ultimately there will be an exit i, I would hope mm -hmm. um but my kind of dream is to, I won't stop working. You know, it's never going to happen. I'm, it's never going to happen. So I want to create a kind of purpose-driven community business. Nice. That is the plan. Um, I don't have any family. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to have children. So there is no one to kind of um, leave anything to behind. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I love helping people. That mm -hmm. That's just my ethos. I just, I would give you my last five pounds because mm -hmm. that's just how I've been brought up to be. Um, it's maybe crazy, but that's what I want to do. And I want to help people who are in very difficult circumstances and can't afford to help themselves. Mm, lovely. So that's that's the big dream. <clears throat> oh, that's amazing. And I know that will happen. And I know that you'll make that happen. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. I will. I think what I've kind of seen throughout this last year is, is you know, I've been very fortunate, you know, in my life. Of, you obviously, you know, I've, I had quite a serious, um, I almost died when I was 21. You know, I made it to 30, I made it to 40, I've made it to 50. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky and I'm very grateful. Um, and I'm able to work, which many people in my position are not able to do so. And I think I've seen over the last sort of nine months, people really struggling financially and mentally. And just because of the strain on the services, not having access to get support and help. And, and no, one should, no one should be in that position. So for me, if I can change a few people's lives for the better, then, then I'll have done something good. Yeah, I agree. Do you think, do you think that life or death situation at such an early age has influenced you in terms of how much you've packed into your life? It's quite interesting, actually. So um, I'm quite a risk. I'm quite a, a risk taker at work, mm -hmm. but in my personal life, I'm not. Okay. Um, and I don't know if it's because I recognise how precious life is and, and I, don't, I don't want to create... It's kind of strange, isn't it? It's a really strange reaction because most people go, yeah, and jump out of planes and do all these things. Whereas I'm more like conservative around that. and like, mm, because that, you know, and I'm, I love life. I love, I want to squeeze every last minute out of it for the things I want to do. So I'm maybe a little more protective in certain areas. Mm. Um, but no, I think I, I just feel very lucky and very grateful and none of us know, none of yeah. us know. So I think it's important to be present yeah. you know I'm a big believer in you know we're very similar in terms of our ethos around around our beliefs and I'm very be present in the moment because enjoy the moment because you know it's like you you think when you look at your phone sometimes as well and I've seen a lot of people posting about this the amount of time we spend on our phones on social media and and we're not really in our own heads anymore and mm -hmm. just putting the phone away and just taking some time out just to be Mm. is quite transformational and it, and it just brings a lot of peace back into into you when sometimes as entrepreneurs we're so stressed and we can't switch our brains off mm. it's really important to just try and just calm calm that mind down yeah yeah it really is it, it's funny I think I, I've been reading a book by Dame Shirley I can't remember a surname huge in IT in the 1960s oh yes 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 yeah, you know the one, Dame Shirley Stevens, I think it is. Steven, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Dame Shirley somebody or other. Yeah. Anyway, amazing woman, 
absolutely amazing. I mean, she came across from Ger Germany in the Kinder transport uh, mm -hmm. it, during the war. And she talks about how, because she was given that chance to lead a life that would otherwise have been taken away from her by Nazi Germany, she decided she had to make the most of that life. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, because I had skin cancer when I was 33, I had the most virulent kind, everything was fine, which is great, which would never had a reoccurrence. But I think, I think those moments where you think, oh, this could be taken away. Mm. I think afterwards you're like, yeah, I really have to make the most of this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. You really, you really do. And I don't think until you've experienced that, mm -hmm. that it actually kind of, kind of quite sinks in. But, yeah, um, no, because people, people who've never experienced that, do, I don't think they get it. No, mm. <laughs> no. You know, I am, um, I was reading, it was really sad. It was really sad, Rebecca. It was, it was a young girl. She was only 31 and very sadly she passed away from <clears throat> cancer yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. And her last post was, I'm fighting to live. I'm angry. I'm angry that my life's been taken away from me. And I think it puts it in perspective that that's the thing. None of us know what tomorrow will bring. And I'm not saying this to be pessimistic, but it's around just enjoy everything you've got now because, yeah. um, and enjoy, yeah, just enjoy it, have fun with it and just, just go with the flow and, don't stress about the stuff mm -hmm. because you know it's, it's not worth it in the end so yeah it, it, it's not worth it and there are moments I don't know whether you experience this but there are moments at the end of the day when I think do you know what if today was the day I'd be happy with what I've achieved in my mm. life I'd be yeah. kind of like yeah I've I've packed it in I've done a lot I've achieved a lot and I could you know I don't want to go today but if it no. did it would be fine <laughs> yeah I think so and that's the thing isn't it we all get I think there's a lot of <clears throat> commercialism in life and we all get hooked up in the latest car and the latest biggest house and <clears throat> strip that all back and actually the it's quite the happiness you'll find in that when by not having to have that constant fear over your head all the time is it actually makes you a better person and actually makes you more able to drive forward and to take more risk on and to to, to really grow and, and change as a person. So yeah, I think sometimes stripping back can help you to, to move forward. <clears throat> you can only drive one car at a time, Cheryl, can't you? You can. You can only drive one car at a time. You can I remember um as part of my university degree, I I lived in Germany <clears throat> and I taught English at a private boarding school. I'd never told you this. And it was full of um really rich and famous children and some of the some of the kids had like 10 cars outside their dorm rooms you know like all your latest really fancy cars and I'm thinking what and then the parents would fly and then the helicopters and it was just another world <laughs> you can only live in one house at a time you can and as my brother said to me the other day he said you can actually only live in one room at a time in that house it's very true and I was like Do you know what that is true you can have a 25 bedroomed home, but you're only ever in one room at a time. It's just more cleaning. <laughs> I haven't got time in life to be cleaning. Yeah, more, more dust, more hoovering. More dust, no more hoovering, not for that. <laughs> if you have a 25 bedroom home, you're not doing any of the cleaning yourself. Probably not. No, Probably no, not. no, I agree. No. <laughs> um, I, I've always thought that the power of money magnifies what's already there in the human being. Hmm. Um, so if you've got a decent human being to begin with power and money just magnifies that decency yeah if you've got a bit of a rotten apple then power and money just magnifies the rotten appleness yeah. of that I'd agree. yeah definitely yeah. agree yeah you <laughs> definitely see that so okay so freedom is the caravan you've got this vision of of giving back which is a, again a huge theme amongst entrepreneurs it's very very common definitely mm um you already give back you employ people you train people you, you know you prove give efficiencies to businesses and things like yeah. that if somebody was starting out today in a similar sector to you what's the best advice you'd give to them Ooh, that's a really interesting question that's mm. a tough question similar sector to me what my advice be mm. um 
I think stay true to your values. I think, do you know what's really hard? Do you know when we all start out in business? Because money drives business growth. You need money, you need contracts. And we sometimes perhaps take on work that's not aligned mm -hmm. to who we are as a business and our values as a business. So I think for me, it would be very clearly identifying what you, what you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. um, stay true to your values because actually it will attract more of the right kind of customers for you rather than the wrong kind of customers, which can cause complete stress and anxiety. Um, surround yourself with the right people is really key. Surround yourself with the right people um, and trust your gut instinct. <laughs> so it will never steer you wrong. That's so true. <laughs> that is so true. Something else occurred to me just then, Cheryl, and that is, I hope you don't mind me saying, but it's taken me a while to persuade you to come on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it has. Two years, in fact, I believe. <laughs> Two years. Yes. I'm, I'm persistent. <laughs> you are persistent. You are persistent. <laughs> what? What? Why were you so reluctant? Um, it comes back to this whole thing we talk about imposter syndrome, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But imposter syndrome isn't, it's it's really sad. It's 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 um self-doubt. Yeah. I'm not good enough. Mm. Why would you want to talk to me? I don't think I've done anything special. I'm just doing my job. Mm. And I think that's what it comes back to. But being, having doubt is human. Yeah. One of the core values of our business is being human. And I thought to myself, Cheryl, you're not, you're not in alignment if you're not being human and you're being, not being who you are. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. And it's also the year of saying yes for me. Oh, is it? Yes. Yeah. I'm quite shy. I am actually really quite shy, believe it or not. I'm good and... Yeah, I'm quite shy. I'm, I'm very outgoing, but I'm also quite shy as well at the same time. And I think the isolation of the last two years has perhaps made that a little bit more, more kind of apparent. But yeah, I just think, do you know what? I have achieved some remarkable things. You know, I've traded through, a I started in a recession. I've traded through a pandemic. I've grown in a pandemic. You know, I've grown the business to a seven figure business. I've had no external investment, no loans, no debt. And I'm really proud of that. Good. Good. I'm really proud of that, and it's take that's taken me that's taken me a long time to be able to say that. And that's I'm not pleased. <laughs> and it's not from a place of um, look at me. It's a place of pride no. and a place of excitement, a place of wonder, almost like wow, how did this happen? Um, and I'm just kind of owning it and I'm owning it on behalf of myself and the team because you know what, it's you know we've done it together, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm so proud of it. Good and rightly so, and I'm so pleased you are proud of it because boy have you worked hard on that business yeah, I've worked hard <laughs> every... I'm still working hard <laughs> yeah it doesn't stop they totally get that. That. totally get that okay so if your business appetite for business was a person or <clears throat> had a character how would you describe it I would say we are very vibrant mm. you can tell by the office we've got color everywhere um there's a very strength of personality and strength of character here. Um, so the not a sense of fun as well as professionalism. Um, we like to have fun too. And we like, and I think also just <clears throat> being human, we talk to people like they're people, mm -hmm. you know, um, and how we're really interested in people. We love people and we want, we just like helping people. So I think that's what it would be. Cool. I love that. What a great place to end. Cheryl, I'm so glad this was the year of yes. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and I yeah. actually got to speak to you on the podcast because I, I knew you'd make a brilliant guest. And you have. So thank, thank you. Me. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.